I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Tuesday, August the 2nd, 2016. Israeli security forces arrested at least 10 Palestinian terror suspects in the West Bank. Overnight last night, Israeli troops conducted several operations in Palestinian towns, also seizing weapons, ammunition, money and vehicles suspected of being connected to planned attacks against Israel. And new information has been released regarding an arrest which we reported to you about two weeks ago of a Palestinian man who was stopped near the Jerusalem light rail station in the center of town by a security guard and was found to be carrying pipe bombs in his bag. It was cleared for publication today that the man was 20-year-old civil engineering student Ali Abu Hassan from Hebron, who built the explosives himself and planned to use them on the light rail on July the 17th. Abu Hassan is a student at the Polytechnic University in Hebron, and according to the prosecutor's office and a statement filed by police today, he had left a will at the university before setting out to commit the attack. According to Israel police, Abu Hassan said the planned attack was a form of, quote, revenge for visits by tourists and Israeli Jews to the Temple Mount. According to the Times of Israel, Abu Hassan was armed with three pipe bombs, which he had covered with nails and screws that had been dipped in rat poison with the intention of doing the most damage possible. He is expected to be indicted for attempted murder this Friday. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu spoke over the phone today with new British Prime Minister Theresa May for the first time since May took office last month. According to the prime minister's office, the two leaders discussed greater cooperation and, quote, regional issues and the threat of global terrorism against which the free world contends. Former Israeli ambassador to the United States Michael Oren has been named deputy minister in Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu's office to serve as public diplomacy chief. Oren was appointed by Netanyahu's office yesterday. He served as ambassador to Washington from 2009 until 2013. He then joined the new party in Israel's Knesset, Kulanu. Former Israeli President Shimon Peres turns 93 today. The former statesman gave a special lecture to IDF soldiers and officers of the Israeli Army's intelligence unit today. They then presented him with a cake to celebrate his special occasion. Paris told them that to see them, the eyes and ears of the nation, and to know the country was in such good hands was the best gift he could ask for. Paris also told the troops he was no longer a young man and that if he could borrow some youth from them, he would. Well, Amari Stoudemire may have retired from the NBA, but he is not giving up basketball just yet. The Associated Press reports that the NBA star forward is set to play for the Israeli basketball team Hapoel Jerusalem. Stoudemire signed a two-year contract on Monday to play for the team, of which he is a partial owner. He will now sell his shares. In the summer of 2010, Stoudemire traveled to Israel to explore what he believed might be Hebrew roots on his mother's side. He said yesterday that playing in Israel was a dream come true. Yesterday, Stoudemire addressed the press at Madison Square Garden with the Israeli and American flags displayed as he signed his contract, showing off his new team hat and new Hapoel Jerusalem jersey. Yeah, this, this is a very, very emotional um, decision for me uh, because at this moment I got to uproot my family, uh, who's been pretty stable here in the United States, and now to move into a different country in Israel where we have never lived before. We visit there all the time, so it's very, very emotional. Um, it's also a spiritual journey for us as well. So, and now we're playing with Jerusalem. It allows me to take care of both, from a spiritual journey and also being able to continue my professional career. Um, my wife and I always talked about living abroad and being able to experience different cultures. And what better culture to experience for us than living in Jerusalem? And now playing for a team that we have a chance to you know, not only win a, a domestic title, but also a, a Euro Cup title. You know, those are the goals for us uh, in Jerusalem. And taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Tuesday, August the 2nd. At 7 o'clock, former National Director of the Anti-Defamation League, Abe Foxman, talks about the dark side of the Internet and his book, Viral Hate, 
with Jewish Week editor Gary Rosenblatt at the Jewish Center in New York City. At a professor of Jewish studies at Indiana University, Professor Shaul Magid talks about the remarkable life and peace philosophy of Israeli Rabbi Menachem Froman. That's in a program from Limud, New York, 2016. At 9 o'clock, Mark Golub sits down with former ambassador to the U.S. Michael Oren on L'Chaim. And at 10 tonight, executive director of the American Jewish Committee, David Harris, talks about the anti-Israel bias that college students face on campuses across the U.S. in a program of the AJC Westchester and Fairfield with Westchester Reform Temple in Scarsdale, New York. And coming up right after this newscast tonight, it's In the News with Mark Golub. And that's the JBS News Update for Tuesday, August the 2nd, 2016. I'm Tisha Bader.